Hey. Hey, Liz. Hi folks, I guess we'll just give people a few minutes. Amy, hello. Hello. Ah, good, I can hear, good. Yes, oh. signing in from the regular office, so howdy, howdy. Oh, I am signing in from Switzerland. <laughs> no, it's good to see people out on the road again. I know, first, well, actually second time out of the country in two years or whatever it's crazy i've gotten a few regrets but i think we should have enough to be able to have like a really robust discussion this morning um okay. there's some folks that'll be joining probably at like the half hour as well but um i know dawn is here because this is something that dawn foster probably wants to be able to talk about as well um brilliant so yeah give it yeah. a few minutes folks will start running on in yeah Lizzie, you're in burn already I'm actually in uh, just outside of Zurich right now, and I'm heading to Bern. As soon as we come off this call, I'm going to jump on a train, but apparently it's only like an hour and a half from where I am. So. Awesome. <laughs> I'm in, at the, I don't know if you know it, I'm in Volkertsville. Well, I've heard of it. <laughs> I'm on the other side. Okay. <laughs> can see the participant count still slightly creeping up, but I think we're probably pretty good to go. Anybody else you're expecting, Amy, that we definitely should wait for, or should we just? Running through the participant lists. No, I think, we're, I think we should actually be okay on this one. So happy to be able to kick us off here. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Usual terms and conditions apply. <laughs> <laughs> you made it hooray indeed these folks are getting updated in the public working doc but this is all of your folks and here's our agenda yeah so i think this is a pretty much open discussion um that came out of you know we have a few it, it, the concrete example is in uh, the storage space where we have i think three different sandbox projects who are applying for incubation and we really wanted to have a discussion about how we, when we have similar projects without, you know, we don't want to just pick a, a winner. We're not kingmakers here, but equally we need to balance that with helping end users navigate the landscape. And if we had a landscape full of 50 different storage solutions, let's say, as an example, how would we help people understand which is appropriate for them? And is it, are there going to be times when some projects are not, you know, that how do we draw a bar to make sure that uh, projects are projects that we want to stand behind and recommend and suggest that end users might want to use them. Um, just having a quick look to see who else is here. Do we have, I think Saad, is Saad here? Not yet, but I'm keeping watch. Right. I was thinking of Saad just because I know he's been involved in looking at those particular storage projects, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm using those as an example that the, the 
same principles need to apply across other projects. And we do have examples of um, multiple projects solving the same kind of problem. You know, we have multiple solutions for um, runtime, for example, ContainerD and Cryo. I think that's a great example where they're both being used really heavily by different sort of sectors of the ecosystem. And that's that, that seems good. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of comp competitive, but they both have strengths. So that's, yeah, I, I don't, I feel like that's a good example of a healthy competition between two, com you know, alternatives. Um, but I wouldn't want to see 50 different runtimes because how would you choose between them? Or maybe there would need to be 50 different use cases. As you said, that Sud is in fact coming to join us. So we can circle back towards the storage conversation. Hi, Hi Sud. Hello. <laughs> so we were just um, sort of laying the scenario of, you know, we have a general problem of the balance between competing projects. You know, we, we having some healthy competition can be good, but we don't want to have a giant number of equivalent projects that are hard for end users to navigate between. And uh, then Saad, we um, mentioned you because I know you've been looking at some projects that have quite a lot of similarities in the storage. Yeah. That's our kind of concrete mm -hmm. example. Yeah, very timely. So I've been looking at Longhorn. Uh, they have applied to incubation. I've been doing their due diligence with them. Um, worked with uh, tag storage uh, on doing that due diligence i raised that question with tag uh, storage as well say hey well, what happens if we end up with a bunch of different uh, software defined storage systems as is going to happen since open ebs is already part of the sandbox uh, and you know we already have uh, rook Seth, and there will be others so what do we do uh, their recommendation was Kind of waffly saying, oh, we don't do kingmakers. We should just let the best projects, you know, in that kind of thing. Uh, so this is a very good question. So I guess the best projects, you know, do how do we concretely evaluate which of a competitive set of projects are the best? To what bar? Uh, yeah. And this is not a question just for Saad. This is a question um, open to whoever wants to get involved and, and throw in their, their thoughts on this. Sorry, do we, I don't understand, do we need to pick the best project or we just need to pick a project that has passed the, the criteria to advance? Is, is, isn't that just it? What, what's the... I, I think the question is more, you know, if at, at the size we're at, it's it's you know it's okay we people can probably pick between let's say two different runtimes but if there were 50 different runtimes again i'm just using runtimes as an example if we had 50 of them how would people choose i don't know I, I that 50 is a, a bad number i don't know what is a good number yeah i think that's actually i mean that obviously is an unrealistic number but if that were true i wouldn't even personally i wouldn't even think that's a bad thing because I mean, ultimately, that means you know, given given there's a very limited attention span for the for the for the for the whole uh, ecosystem and the industry. I mean, given that means if there's fifty thing or even ten things going on on a specific topic, that's got to be a very very interesting topic. So, so I mean, if 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 all ten projects, let's say, pass the criteria for incubation and even graduation, whatever criteria, subjective, objective criteria we set, then I think they should advance. And, uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll do our best to, to shepherd those projects, to, to, to help people choose the right project. We gotta do all of that. But ultimately, I mean, let's just say the interest wanes, the, the hype cycle ended, and then some, then some of these projects will no longer be interesting. And then we will archive them, you know. So I, I don't, I don't know if that's that's the that's almost like the worst case scenario, but it still doesn't seem that bad to me because the premise of all of that is is there is something that exciting going on, you know. So <laughs> so anyway, that's 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 my thought, Dims. Uh, hi, 
So I think we talked a little bit on another call before, uh, I forget exactly when. So, uh, so if as a problem statement, I would say is uh, somebody's coming in, they want to know which of a certain uh, type should they look for, right? So um, one example that I have that of a community which did this uh, in, a, in a good fashion was like in OpenStack uh, Cinder, since we're talking about like storage and sad so uh, th that is the example where um, you know they had a matrix and they said here is the list of features that are available uh, that are possible uh, and here is uh, uh, here is a set of the drivers that are available and you know you essentially have a checkbox uh, if it supports it and uh, x mark if it doesn't so if we come up with like a generalized matrix for for example run times right where we say Okay, um, here is the different ways of looking at it, uh, whether it is features or uh, whether it is capabilities. And then we, you know, we maintain uh, and we essentially get input from the run, uh, the folks maintaining the runtime saying, what are the things that you think you are important to your runtime that we can put it on a matrix and then we can use it for comparison, right? And then when they, when somebody comes in uh, to evaluate a runtime, they'll go look at this matrix and say, okay, this is important for me. Th uh, that's not important for me. So let, uh, let me pick one of these two uh, or one of these five, right? Um, so it gives them a chance to like, look at what are the different things that I should be looking at uh, and which of these runtimes uh, support or does not support uh, one of these uh, things that I'm interested in and give them a starting point. That is basically what I'm looking for is like, how do we get somebody started? Um, more than, uh, you know, once you well, once you show them, okay, evaluate continuity or, or evaluate cryo because it has a set of things that you have. And then if you don't really like it, see if there's something else that is available, um, you know, and, and go evaluate that. Uh, that. That was how I was thinking about it. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, my hesitation on that example is I think it's really great until you scroll to the right and you see, I, I didn't count them, you know, like 15 that have like a tick in the top two columns and then a series of crosses. And I guess as a naive end user, I'd be thinking, where do I start to evaluate these? Maybe the answer to that is we ask the project to tell us how they differentiate themselves from the 14 other options. Right, of course. Um, th so basically we are crowdsourcing this matrix to the people who are doing the work uh, and we are not like uh, as a POC maintaining the matrix or anything like that, right? Um, so uh, they work on it together, you know, similar to, uh, 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 let's take the run times, right? So, um, if we say that the tag maintains uh, the matrix and uh, all the runtimes, uh, you know, when they have something new, the exciting that they are uh, happy about, they go to the tag and say, hey, I want to add this to the matrix and uh, can we start tracking this stuff? I really like yeah, the idea of tags maintaining the matrices like that. I don't know yeah, how the tags feel if anyone wants to shout. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good idea. I, I, it's the uh, Kubernetes CSI is actually a good example of where we're doing something like this. I think there's over a hundred CSI drivers now, and the Kubernetes CSI community maintains a table uh, with all the drivers, links to them, uh, and then a little matrix of what their features are. Uh, I think that's working well um, uh, overall. The interesting thing there is that you know the CNCF doesn't host all those drivers. Necessarily, some of them are hosted uh, within the Kubernetes project, uh, but the vast majority of them are actually, you know, self-hosted by the company uh, themselves, and we just link out to them. Uh, so that is a a, a good example. Uh, I think uh, uh, overall, what it boils down to is what Liz is saying, which is what happens as an end user when I'm trying to make a decision. How do we make end user life easy, basically? So if we have some sort of guidance on where to start and how to pick, uh, I think that seems like a, a, a good uh, good solution. Yeah, I think from the end user point of view, it's something like what 
Dim said kind of makes sense, like having some kind of matrixy thing and having the project maintainers kind of saying why they think their project is special. Like, I don't know where the fastest or where the, I don't know, most available or whatever, like have some metrics. The thing that I think is interesting given this path we're going towards having the tags maintain something like this is in the scope of an incubation project, when do we go from this thing doesn't exist to it does, right? Like you have one project does something, you don't have it. But then like the sixth project comes in and we say, you pass all the incubation requirements, but we're not letting you become an incubating project until this matrix is created? Or like, how do we get to the point that this thing exists once we've crossed whatever that number is without penalizing the nth project in its process towards getting incub incubated? I just posted in chat, one of the things we've been trying to drive out of the contributor strategy tag is getting people to better define their charters and what function, functionality is in scope, what's out of scope and help people differentiate this because I mean, the, the problem we're trying to solve is that we're in a complex ecosystem with lots of overlapping functionality. So the better we can get people to document this in the readmes, I think it doesn't necessarily solve the, the matrix problem, but I think it gets us a step in that direction. And Josh Burkus has been driving, trying to get this included in the project templates as well. So hopefully we'll we'll get this in better shape. But we do have we do have the document that I linked into the chat, which talks about how projects can better document some of this. So so we can encourage people to use some of that. One thing that's that's just crossed my mind is sometimes less is more. Right, you know, a, a simple, straightforward project that does one thing really well may be better for some applications than a project with a whole ton of extra bells and whistles. So I wonder if we need to somehow express that through the matrices or accompanying dot. I, I think it was someone mentioning things like high performance, you know, that that might be the thing people might you know trade off few features for high performance of one particular feature and it would be really nice to make sure people are aware of that and not just seeing oh i'm looking for a matrix with all the ticks that's the sort of thing i was hoping to get out of having like a blurb or something from the project like they might say we check only one box but we are the best at that box so if that's what you want use our project but if you want something else, obviously use something different. Uh, and I feel like that's the kind of thing you can only get if you give the project, like, give me a two sentence elevator pitch for why you're different as opposed to just the matrix. Oh, uh, right. So on the same page, uh, you know, you can have the blurbs at the bottom and the link to the actual uh, readme. And so it's two clicks instead of like one click, right? Like we don't want uh, a massive page that's hard to maintain too. There might be a concrete example. Uh, it's slightly off the beaten path, but there's various sites usually called alternative to.net or equivalent to, and they're pretty much, oh, some tool I like isn't being produced anymore, or now it's commercial, or for, for whatever reason. And I kind of like the examples they have. They often have um, a sort of matrix, but it varies from one category of software or even just two specific apps, one to another. So it might just be a nice visual example of something that kind of overlaps with the matrix that's already been described. It cuts down to here's the key things you like and maybe one will have three key features and the other just has two. It can't perfectly map them one to one, but it spells out this one has more features and it excels in these three categories users are interested in. And this one only meets one or two, but does them exceptionally well. So I found that to be a particularly uh, interesting example. Yeah, but I, I, um, I'd like to chime in. So um, in terms of uh, the work to be done, I think, uh, you know, creating a matrix uh, for everything, I think would take a lot of time. So I think uh, I like the idea of the blur. Um, yeah, and I think it, it will vary between different projects. Uh, in the case of Cryo and ContainerD, you clearly have two projects that do something very similar, but it, for example, in tag runtime, uh, we're looking at edge projects or the edge computing projects. And 
they tackle the problem in different ways. Uh, they, they're essentially solving a similar problem and, and they're in a similar space, but they're solving the problem in different ways. So I think it might be good for the project to provide, you know, a blur of why, you know, th those particular projects are, you know, better or how they can be used, um, you know, in, in, as opposed to a different project uh, for a, a certain kind of application. And we do have questions about like how how does your project compare to other projects in the cloud native ecosystem or something along those lines i think in both the sandbox and the incubation uh documentation but i think we we sort of have that in the evaluation but we don't really maintain that or make it available to end users in a consumable way Is there a specific intent to provide the all the comparisons up front for consumers, or do we back away from that a bit and just give here's the blurb and leave it to uh, end users to do their research and compare them and arrive at said conclusion? It does kind of remove us from the position of um, appearing to endorse a particular one versus another. Yeah, I mean, I guess that the, there is already a signal of endorsement by having a project in, particularly in an incubation or graduation. Um, so we are providing some kind of endorsement, but I, I, I feel like right now there's a sufficiently small amount of choice that although it's a huge landscape and pretty hard to navigate, it's not completely insurmountable but i worry that we will get to a point you know we've got a lot of projects in the sandbox and and some of those experiments we expect to fail but quite a lot of them probably will turn into really great projects and i just worry that we'll we need to help end users you know we're supposed to be uh while we're not king making we are supposed to be helping people build really good cloud native stacks and you know, finding the best projects from which to do that. Um, so I guess I do feel that we have some responsibility to help people understand what the strengths of different projects are. And, and another question uh, to me, whether that should be part of the incubation or part of the graduation, right? So. When a project gets into incubation, the expectation, it's not a guarantee, but the expectation is that it is on a path to graduation. And I feel like when I want to compare, when I want to assess projects for incubation, one of the things I want to understand is how does it compare to its you know, alternatives? So I personally would really like to see this at incubation level. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Bob agreeing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Would it be premature to throw out a potential technical idea that might uh, fit the bill, or save it for a separate meeting? No, go ahead, please. <laughs> I was I was thinking of uh, two platforms that sort of come to mind. One was uh, LinkedIn, and one was Degreed. And I remember with like a degree, um, employers often have their employees add a ton of skills. And I believe some similar platforms, you can even add like a number. So you have just a massive dictionary of thousands of keywords and skills that people want to associate with themselves, data mining, cloud computing, et cetera. And then they can add like sort of a score out of 10 to it. I'm wondering if maybe it's sort of a community driven, here's like the key features that OPA versus some other uh, policy management engine has that are relevant to that sort of domain. And then they can maybe add some sort of, maybe not numbers, maybe a scaling, low, high, medium, good, great, best or something. I wonder if it's sort of a community or maybe maintainer driven set of features that uses keywords and they can throw the rankings in there. Um, I'm wondering if an engine like that might help save us the work of sort of handcrafting all these matrices and comparing them, but we still have somewhat similar criteria to compare different projects with. Just 
bunch of key value pairs. Yeah, I guess I'd slightly worry that we'd end up with a popularity contest rather than a real assessment of capabilities. But I, I, I would love it if we could crowdsource it in a meaningful way. Adam, have your hand up. Yeah, sorry. Um, this might be a bit of a naive question, but um, I'm not sure where, where the notion of the responsibility of finding the best comes from here. It's been mentioned several times that the responsibility is to find the best open source projects or to pick individuals. And that doesn't seem like mentioned in the charter for the CNCF in any kind of way. And it doesn't seem like it's actually um, the responsibility of this group. It's more the responsibility of the users to make the determination of what's best for them. And then through that selection of what's best for them, there might be some aggregate sense of what's the most popular or most useful or most broadly applicable. But the judgment of saying this is best seems a little bit, um, you know, sort of like outside of the scope of what we're, the, the, we're supposed to be thinking about. We're supposed to evaluate whether something is viable, technically capable, useful to the community, those sorts of things. But whether it's better than something else seems a little bit the opposite of what we should be doing if we're trying to encourage as much adoption as cloud native technologies as possible. So I was just having a quick look to to find where you know where in the the charter, and you're you're absolutely right. The charter doesn't really talk about um, qualitative assessment, but I know from uh, particularly speaking with Alexis when he was first sort of you know his his kind of um, vision for what the TOC was there to do was that it definitely is applying judgment that you know we, we can't just have a tick box of criteria that it is supposed to be um helping assess not just the kind of you know is this project healthy although that's a real really significant part of it but also does it is it a good solution to a problem and I think it's very clear that being in the CNCF is a is an endorsement and that endorsement suggests a level of approval. Um, which needs to be balanced with the no kingmakers. I completely agree. I don't think it's a um, uh, an easy line to draw, but I think what we're definitely not trying to do is accept every project that considers itself to be cloud native. I think we are looking for a quality bar and then that immediately says there's got to be some judgment about quality. Well, it, but it seems like the criteria we have already established for sort of, you know, sandbox versus incubating versus graduating is itself a collection of hurdles that provides that validation and judgment that are about the viability of the project inside the guidelines of what we have. So, you know, it seems to me like, you know, the door should be really open at Sandbox because the movement to the next level is actually qualitatively assessed with a process around it. So it's like, you know, the, you know, where is the, where is the judgment actually fit inside the process if we've already got a process for evaluating viability, usefulness, and things like that that exists for each of these graduating stages? I've just seen Dawn's note. I don't know, Dawn, if you're still on, but did you want to just jump in and mention before you need to drop the health metrics point? Is Dawn still here? I think we lost her already. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, Adam, I'd, I'd just seen her. Uh, comment and um, I I don't think I don't think this conversation it needs to be about changing the criteria for sandbox and the kind of bottom of the funnel because that is very um, 
we, we've talked about that quite a lot. And I think that the bar for entry for that is pretty low in, in some respects. But incubation is is where we really start seeing people taking notice of what the CNCF is saying. You know, we see Sandbox is experimental and, and we're not making any guarantees about that, but we are telling people that, you know, an incubation product is something that maybe early adopters want to consider for, for production use. And I think that's something we need to take, take responsibility when we say that. Um, so I think the question for me is not, are we changing the bar? It's more about how do we help? Is it useful to end users if there are, let's say, three different projects that essentially do the same thing? Maybe it is, but if it is, how do we express why that's useful? So I don't, I don't think it's just about saying, it's not just about quality, it's about communicating the, the values of different projects. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, just, I'm pretty naive, naive statement from my perspective. I'm only being involved with you guys for following along for the last year or so, so I don't have all the backstory for everything, but you, know, my general thinking about this and my experience in other open source communities is the, the marketplace of ideas is the marketplace of ideas. Like it is okay to have 15 different implementations of exactly the same thing, because at a certain point, the users will make the choice that identifies that this is the thing that works the best for them, regardless of all the other pieces. And we can give them a framework to help make that decision. But ultimately it is the end user's choice about whether those things are viable. And there's plenty of situations where a very, very reasonable open source project is still interested and useful for a particular subsection of the industry, despite it being completely replicated in another faction somewhere else. And it's, that's completely fine in, in sort of like the general sense of open source land. And in particular, it's completely fine in the general sense of getting as many people to use cloud native, you know, work as all. It's like if that thing works really great in that industry, then you don't need to try to encourage people to migrate away from it to something that's equivalent or more popular somewhere else. Um, so that's where they may sort of like, you know, letting the users make the determination um, about what is valuable. Um, and, you know, I keep falling back to that sort of, sort of like sense of this is the way, this is the way it will happen in the end anyway. Um, so like, you know, we can, put that thumb on the scale, so to speak, or we can give them tools to help them make the sort of those determinations. But making those determinations ourselves is, you know, sort of like, you know, feels like it's the wrong way around for the way that things are gonna, adoption or choice is gonna happen from my uh, perspective. I, I, I don't think we are talking about making a determination as much as like giving guidance saying, if you are evaluating projects in this area, then look at these aspects where things are the same or things are different. Um, it, so you can make up your own mind. Um, th that, that's basically what I was looking for rather than the popularity kind of thing, which can be gamified. I think that's exactly right. It's trying to find a way of getting the real um, qualities of a project expressed in a way that consumers can can understand the differences between them. And some of those differences might well come from the experiences of end users. You know, and I, I think some of the the metrics that I was just having a, a quick look at the the things that Dawn had pointed out. You know, things like responsiveness to issues that's a you know a, a pretty interesting metric for what's it going to be like for an end user if they if they have problems like how 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 responsive is is the project going to be to those problems i i, I can see that being a really useful thing to I, I don't think that's quite what we want to have in the matrix if we're still going on the matrix idea but having this data available is going to help end users assess which projects they want to experiment with. 
So I think one plus one to that list, uh, I think one idea I think we still like seem to be like getting the tags to do this, right? To each tag should have a page where they have some sort of information about the projects that fall under them and uh, they may it with consultation with the projects that uh, they are responsible for. Right, and it could be a matrix. It might not be a matrix. It it could be a set of blurbs uh, with pointers back to CNCF landscape or uh, the readmes of the different projects or whatever they feel like. But you know, from our point of view, we should say, okay, hey tags, go do this. Uh, have a page where uh, a CNCF end user can come and look and get a sense of like what's going on here. And the TOC liaisons can help, you know, for each tag can help the tag kind of come to a to land on a solution, whether it's a matrix or or something else that works for those that set of projects. Does anybody think this is a bad idea to ask tags to take on the task of documenting how different incubating projects differentiate themselves from each other? I think from the tag perspective, um, they can ask the project maintainers, you know, to come up with that information, right? So I think some of the work it will be to just, you know, lining up all that information and making sense out of it. But, uh, you know, um, most of the information will come from the project maintainers or the projects themselves. I completely agree. I think that the tags can play a role in helping like standardize that across different projects and, and making sure it's not all just sort of marketing fluff from the different projects. Right, and, and basically like um, be the referee uh, when people will say, hey, this yeah. thing is unique in mine and like, okay, collapse it into one <laughs> line item rather than two line items, something like that, right, Ricardo? Correct, correct, yeah. The, the one caution I'd have is if you have things like features, either you have the feature or you don't. But if you get into these gray areas of, oh, how responsive am I? Who's highest performing? Th then you're going to get into these battles. And, and the only challenge you're going to have is where are you going to get data that everyone can agree on as to what the right metric is for a given product on that? A feature at least seems relatively black and white. You have it or you don't. And the features are what end users are looking for. Then it's clear. If you get into performance element, responsive element, et cetera, I think you're going to be in a troubled spot. And then, then you're going to be caught in this endless debate of, no, we are the highest performing. Well, how do you prove that? Because the other project says they are too, right? Uh, agree. Um, so uh, let's leave the community aspects out of this and uh, leave it technical. Um, and it, and it, yeah, probably that's the right way to do it. And I think that's where the tags can come in to play a kind of police role of like, okay, if you're going to make this claim about performance, show me the proof, you know, let's, and, and the tags can, you know, they, they know that area, they, they can help assess whether those claims are true or not true, or maybe they tone down the language that the project would, you know, and maybe, maybe it becomes less, we're the most high performance and more, here is a, Bit of documentation about performance of this project measured in a certain way which might be informative but may not be the end of the story yeah um, i mean it could be the highest performance for a particular case but it i mean it may not be the highest performance for everything right so i think that the tag can actually uh point out that that aspect right so like uh you know so it's going to be marketing material and you know and you know claims about projects, right? So they, yeah, I think that I agree with that. So. So, so the tag might come in and say, you have to, uh, the line item would be supports high performance mode. And then the link for each of the project would be to how they do high performance and how they measure high performance. Should we be measuring? And, and, and I kind of asked that question in terms of I don't think we should be comparing subjective stuff. 
I think we should be comparing, you know, functionality or other metrics where, you know, it's number of end users or biggest deployed project or whatever it is. But but should we be measuring things which are completely subjective? Like you, you, you could put 10 engineers in a room and spend three months trying to figure out the best way of measuring performance and, and still not come to a conclusion. Uh, how are we how are we going to put performance metrics for different projects? I, th I think this is where th this is exactly where the tags need to sort of be using judgment and saying, you know, this claim is or isn't a reasonable thing to say about a project, you know, like if someone, I, I think it would be totally reasonable for a project in its differentiation to say, here is some data on not just the performance measurements, but how we came up with them and what it was we were measuring as a kind of piece of information, you know, and maybe they make a claim that says, we believe this makes us really high performance in certain scenario and maybe the tag can look at that and say yeah that's a reasonable claim or no the data doesn't back up that claim or it, you know it's it's too subjective we're not prepared to publish that on our assessment of what differentiates i think it should be really the tag making the decision of this is how we assess the way different projects differentiate from each other uh, there is also one more yardstick, right? The yardstick is like how much of this information uh, is required by an end user when they are just starting out, right? Uh, uh, so if it's so, the tag might say this is not relevant information for uh, this sp specific thing that we are talking about. Why we are putting this together? Yeah, but but even even then, right? You know. How do you judge what an end user needs when putting something together? Like for a small end user, it might be ease of use, and for a large end user, it might be the ability to scale. Yeah, they can do two clicks or three clicks to get to the point where they have that information, Alex. They can go mm. to the me and then dig, a, dig deeper into like what are the benchmarks and things like that. So uh, I, I, don't... I, I don't think we need to overthink this too much. Right. It doesn't need to be like, the full and complete assessment of every possible quality of every project. It's more, I think, about, let's take this storage example, you know, as a concrete example. If you're looking at Longhorn and EBS and I've forgotten what the third one is. The third one. <laughs> um, yeah. Chibao, I think, is the one I'm thinking of. Um, but Rook is also, you know, but if you're looking at those different things what is it that they do that is you know, that means it's viable to have four different projects why, why do we believe that's that's the case and why would a end user be interested in one or two of those projects but not the other two or three so let's take that as as a simple thing then so so rook is an operator and it's not a storage product ChaiboFS is a distributed file system, and Longhorn is a is a is a block store. So they are fundamentally completely different functions. The only one that has some overlap, which we're about to consider, is OpenEBS, which is a block store too, but obviously has some differences. So, you know, out out of those four things, given that. You know, these these things are either sandbox or incubation or graduated in the case of Rook. We kind of should know that one is just an operator and the other is just a file system, right? And another is a block store. Yeah, that's exactly what we need to bring up in this comparison page. Like when one look at the comparison page, you should be able to see that these three are different from the other two, right? Exactly. Yeah. This, this it does. It, this isn't. It's that level of detail we don't really have right now. Like, you know, that the, level of not very much detail that we don't have right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess for me the the challenge is going to be when we're comparing things which are a little bit more similar or or have similar functionalities. I, I think that's going to be that's going to be problematic because 
we've had a discussion about this in, in our own tag call a couple of weeks back. One of the things that we were all deeply uncomfortable with is, you know, becoming kingmakers in, in, in some of this stuff. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm not super comfortable being a judge of somebody else's marketing or, or somebody else's performance claims or, or, or something else, because when it's, when it's functionality or, you know, it does this thing or it does that thing, that, that's easy to talk about. But when you're, when you're comparing subjective stuff, um, it's, it's much, much harder. And I'm not entirely sure we could do this without controversy at a lot of steps. Yeah. So I agree. Alex, so what we would say on the landing page is we would say has performance benchmarks and the links will be to the respective projects benchmark page. Right, right. but are we taking it on ourselves to do an apples for apples performance benchmark on some standardized benchmark performance? No, because... what we're saying is go look at, uh, here is where you go look at uh, what has been published by a specific project rather than here is how you compare using the same benchmark uh, with two different uh, things. Right, but just but just for just for um, just to make the point here, we we've spent quite a bit of time writing a performance white paper, for example, and we we kind of highlight how hard it is <laughs> to do apple for apple comparison because there are so many things to consider, and we actually conclude in the document that you should absolutely always ignore vendor benchmarks and you should run your own tests in your own environment because that's the only way to measure anything worthwhile. Um, and, and so, you know, no, I actually don't feel comfortable pointing to benchmarks published by the vendors. I, I think that's just bogus. Oh, well, we would throw in the link to this white paper too, saying read this white paper first and then here you go, look. <laughs> And okay. I don't think we should be asking the tags to publish anything they're not comfortable with. I mean, you know, right. in, some, right. in some cases, there may be a measure that makes sense. And in other cases, maybe there just isn't. Or maybe it just comes down to, uh, like I say, we're not, we're not trying to overthink this. It doesn't have to be a full encapsulation of everything. It, it's not replacing the end user doing any experimentation testing themselves it's more just saying how do we help people like if we've got two block storage projects now what is it that would make some people lean towards one and other people lean towards another and it might be i don't really know the storage market very well so i don't but i, I can go back to the runtime example of saying you know if you're choosing between cryo and container d a big part of that choice is just going to be the ecosystem you're in if you're in the red hat ecosystem you're probably leaning towards cryo i think that's the reality of the reasons why people lean one way or the other it's not a secret we can talk about that yeah no that's 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 fair i i, I would be just on a principle level I would be uncomfortable sort of getting to a position where we're recommending one product over another um, based on subjective matters. I, I think yeah. things, things, things like ecosystem or, <clears throat> you know, for example, you know, talking about, um, you know, um, objective things like, like, you know, scale or, or, or security or, 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 you know, functionality, those are fine because they're, they're factual, they're objective. Um, but if we're recommending <clears throat> one thing over another based on subjective stuff, I think that's where we open the proverbial can of worms. Yeah, and I, I absolutely don't, don't want to ask anybody to, you know, do something they're not comfortable with. I think that's part of, you know, the tags ownership of that assessment should be, you know, this is, this is what we're comfortable with and it may be extremely factual. And it may even say, honestly, we don't have any reason to prefer one of these projects over the other, but they're both, you know, I don't know, this one's popular in Asia and this one's popular in the America or something. I, I don't know, whatever the... Yeah, I think it's, it's not in the spirit of making a recommendation. It's more in the spirit of helping end users navigate the ecosystem and the landscape of projects, right? To, oh, look at this, this information is here and there, and we can help you, you know, see what information is available there and you can make your determ determinations. Yeah. 
I think I'll take that a step further and say that it should never be making a recommendation. It's not just not about that. It literally isn't making a recommendation. And as an end user, I would be okay with something as simple as a list of projects and each one of them having like a two sentence place where their marketing department wrote something. And if five projects each wrote, we are the fastest X in the world, then as an end user, I just know I have to do all my own research because they're all saying the same thing. But I think with a lot of these projects, they will have either slightly different ways of saying it. Like we use the least CPU versus we, I don't know, are the fastest over the wire or something. Or they will just say completely different things. Like we have the simplest possible runtime. And that might not be true, but at least that tells me immediately what that project focuses on. And as an end user, it helps me simplify it a little bit. But to be honest, I wouldn't trust any of it anyway. I would want to do my own research to the point that Alex was making. And I would never, even if the tag came up and said like, I don't know, Magic FS is the fastest file system for your use case, I would say, eh, I'm not sure that Spotify is doing the same thing as tag storage, so I'll still test it. But I'd love some place that doesn't just list here all the storage projects. Instead, it says something about them, even if it's complete marketing. Do you, do you know, I would love for us to do a better job of publishing the the information that we do that we gather during the due diligence for incubation and the annual reviews and that sort of thing because because that contains real valuable information about the product's architecture the team's structures you know the, the roadmaps often you know it has interviews and whatever with with end users that describe their own actual use cases we we should do a better job of setting up a library of of, of that information i mean that is factual authorized you know reviewed and voted on and not subjective at all maybe maybe just to second what dave was saying i would add like if, to take the data example if I wouldn't end up as an end user in a page with object storage, shared file systems, block block storage, like columns and a bunch of products, and I'm looking for object storage, if I see one product that only offers all the object storage and all the others offering the three, I might be tempted, okay, maybe in the future I'll need them, so I'll pick that one. But maybe the one that has only object storage is the one that I need because it's more performant or something. So those metrics are really important for end users as well. So maybe having these two lines where the project explains why they do things and what they focus on is also important. Otherwise, the matrix can be a bit misleading for end users as well. Yep. Some, some comments going in about um, public visibility of um, due diligence documents. I think it's a great point. Those, th those documents are, a lot of work goes into those they are public people can look at them but they don't because they're not easy to find and and it's not easy to compare them and and i think maybe having some way of pulling the salient pieces yeah into like one page where you can say yeah here's the sort of you know two sentence description and here's the kind of really high level feature matrix if that's appropriate you know or this is block storage this is object what, what however we want to categorize and, and and i think the tags would be in a really good position to do that and then it could just link to the due diligence documents that would be great okay this I makes think. slightly more sense because i was putting plenty of comments in there and like the uh, chat going like wait we we, we do publish this but, but, but we do and and what i'm hearing is that it's not immediately available for people to understand what is this gigantic thing why is it here yeah, like maybe um, Ricardo saying GitHub file with links to all of them. Yeah, whether we have them all in one place or a per tag. At the moment, I'm picturing like a per tag, just overview of the projects and that could link into those due diligence. I mean, each, each tag tends to list projects on the reval or, or projects which are done um, in their repos and in their readmes, right? So adding links to the, the documents and any other, you know, collateral would be straightforward enough. Would it be better to make this web searchable easily uh, rather than GitHub? It might be a barrier to end users. 
That's, I mean, that's fair. We, you know, cncf.io slash projects list them all. There could be a link to the DD documents added there. Tricky part about that is that data is actually coming from the landscape. So if we want to be able to somehow like put this like, and I, I recognize that we're getting into like procedural pieces here rather than like the substantive, like the, oh yeah, we should, we should do this. Um, so we might have to take this one offline. I think the principle okay. here is, is a good one. And you know, whether or not it's initially on GitHub and then at some future point gets translated into somewhere on the web, you know, maybe we take it step by step like that. Uh, the but, action item that I am hearing out of this is make the due diligence documents slightly more visible, either with like working with the tags or being able to like link to it on like CNCFIO. Yes. Okay. And I think having the tags with the for each area, I don't know whether this duplicates something that's already on the landscape, but I think we nevertheless need something somewhere that says here are the projects that are incubating and graduated and here are the key characteristics of them to help you understand this is block storage this is you know and we don't necessarily need that for every project it's more as soon as we start having similar projects that people get confused by let's try and help people navigate that okay so what i hear in that like the first part already available on the landscape. The second part, the descriptive part, is where we should be relying on the projects to be able to like put in more details here rather than just saying, I am storage. Yeah, I mean, the first part is saying it's available on the landscape. They're very broad buckets there. Uh, well, the, the part where we say which ones are incubating, which one are graduating, which one is sandbox, that's, that's already kind of done. Yeah, no, I meant more uh, in the landscape where it says things like this is storage. Okay. Or... Yeah, I, I think this is somewhere where the tags and the talk can help. I've found when talking to projects, especially, for example, when they're doing things like submitting a sandbox um, proposal or, or a sandbox uh, um, form, putting two or three sentences together that actually describes the project in a way that's not either technically obtuse or you know, marketing overloaded is really, really important. So to be able to say, look, this project does this in this way for these, this sort of use case is, is really valuable. And, and sometimes the project needs guidance on, on that because, you know, we've had a fair few instances where projects making an application to Sandbox, for example, just completely, you know, the TOC actually got the wrong complete end of the stick based on the description of the project um supplied so so actually being able to to help them with this i think is super valuable i'm wondering whether like on the cncf site we have places where there is you know like project logos whether we should be crafting for those you know with the projects maybe you know the projects come up with it and the tags help review like what's the two sentence description of each project? Yep. So I, th I feel like we need to, we, we've got some good ideas here. I think we've slightly moved away from the matrix suggestion, but I still feel like the, does it make sense? And I think this is a question really for Saad and Alex as in, and I can't remember who else is liaison for, for storage, but maybe to look at storage as an example. Sorry, we keep using storage as the example and kind of flesh out if we did a feature comparison chart, would that look right or not? And does it make more sense to have it as like a couple of sentence, sentences for each? Yeah, got it. Uh, I think overall uh, guidance seems to be fairly clear, which is let's, uh, you know, let the best projects rise up. Uh, we're not trying to play kingmakers here. That's the ultimate goal. At the same time, we're trying to balance that with uh, let's make sure that users and users have a clear idea of what they should use. That's where it gets a little bit tricky, uh, especially if we get into head-to-head -head comparisons and you know we get into subjective things 
uh, and we'll kind of try to use as much as possible uh, the data that's collected around due diligence and things like that, surface that to uh, end users to help them make their decisions. And overall, let, let the tags kind of make the judgment call about what are the best uh, or most productive ways to, to help the end users navigate uh, the landscape. Uh, does that sound right? Awesome, thank you, Saad. That sounds like a really good summary. <laughs> Brilliant, oh, I think that was a really you. useful discussion. I think we've hit the hour on the head. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks all. Bye.